Hi there, I'm Alex Howe, a technical product marketing manager at LumaField, and today I'm going to talk about our battery quality report. Lithium-ion batteries are absolutely everywhere. The average American owns nine lithium-ion battery-powered devices, and just think about how many electronics you might have in your home or in your bag. Any of those devices that are rechargeable are more likely than not powered by a lithium-ion battery. And each one of those batteries carries a little bit of risk. About one in a million lithium ion batteries is expected to experience some kind of reliability failure. And that number jumps to one in 40 million for safety failures, uh, the kind of more bigger newsworthy incidents you might hear about. And those numbers seem really, really small, but when you start to think about the volume of batteries that surround us in daily life, that's when those figures start to become a little more concerning. Within the lithium ion battery space, 18650 cells are extremely common. Uh, they're named for being 18 millimeters in diameter and 65 millimeters long. And they're really popular because since they're wound and come with a standardized form factor, they can be mass produced in a really um, time efficient and cost efficient manner. On average, about 5 billion 18650 battery cells are produced every year. And they are assembled into packs generally and used in a wide variety of devices. Uh, for example, things like rechargeable drills, the battery pack in this contains several 18650 battery cells. So these cylindrical cells are manufactured through a winding process. And we can look then at a few key quality attributes to understand the quality of that manufacturing process and the general reliability then we can infer about those cells. In the report, we look at two main quality indicators related to this. The first is anode overhang. So a battery, a cylindrical battery like this is made by winding layers of the negative anode, positive cathode and separator uh, together into what's called a jelly roll. And you want to have that negative anode overhang the positive cathode by a little bit. For this type of battery, the kind of industry standard is about half a millimeter. And the reason you want that amount of overhang is to prevent then as the battery is being used uh, for irregular lithium plating to occur because that irregular lithium plating, depending on where it goes, right, it can form dendrites that lead to reliability issues. And those dendrites can even grow to pierce a separator, which can lead to thermal runaway and that battery overheating and potentially battery fires. Ideally, you really want to have that half a millimeter of overhang. If you have insufficient overhang, it really increases that risk of that plating and dendrite formation. And actually having too much overhang can be a problem as well. Not only is it wasteful of active material, uh, but it also can lead to those extra long anodes making contact with the can, leading to other kinds of shorts and performance issues later. The other key quality factor we looked at was edge alignment. So when you're winding the cell, you want those electrode layers to be really even and straight, right? That's telling you your winding process is really tightly controlled. If you see that shifting in that process, uh, it can pose kind of two issues, right? The first is it can lead to the same type of uneven uh, distribution of ions like we talked about for overhang. And then it also indicates really poor process control. And that may imply that the manufacturer may have other quality issues that mean uh, there are other types of defects being introduced throughout the process. Neither of these defects guarantees that a battery is going to fail or that it's definitely going to catch fire. Um, thermal runaway incidents, you know, battery safety incidents, these are really caused by a multitude of factors coming together that combine the quality of the cell, how it's designed into a pack or larger assembly, the environment, as well as use conditions. But these poor quality indicators can really increase the chances of that type of failure taking place. And so controlling these qualities in your battery cells is really important um, to ensure that they're less likely to experience failures in the field. And these particular features are really not something you can discern without CT. Uh, batteries, you know, they're full of hazardous materials. They're not something you can easily slice open and perform destructive testing on. While performance testing might be more common, oftentimes batteries that have these types of defects will perform just fine for a certain period of time, and it's with extended use that then uh, these defects really manifest into dendrites and degraded performance. And so they can go undetected until they've been in the field for a while. For the battery quality report, we scanned over 1,000 batteries, 1,054 to be exact. We sourced at least 100 cells from 10 different brands uh, from three different 
categories of cell supplier. The OEM battery cells came from well-known battery manufacturers. Uh, there are a few, but we uh, selected cells from Murata, which had purchased the merge with Sony's battery business, Panasonic, and Samsung. For the ReRep brands, so ReReps are interesting because they generally source their cells from OEMs. And ideally, they're sourcing high quality cells that are exactly what they say they are. But there's always a little bit of mystery because ReReps brands can potentially maybe source OEM cells that failed QA at the OEM or perhaps were assembled into packs and then those packs have been salvaged and the cells have been extracted individually. Um, and so they're really an interesting category where they're generally high quality, but you're never 100% sure. But we purchased three different brands, two uh, from the same reputable 18650 battery online stores where we bought the OEM cells from and one directly from uh, the brand website itself. And then lastly, we have our four kind of counterfeit and low cost brands. So one of the cells in particular from Amazon is definitely a counterfeit. So you can see that the packaging is really clearly trying to mimic that of the Samsung battery. It's the same color, the text is similar, but not exact. And also on the Amazon listing, it said authentic 30 QP batteries. And the Samsung branding for their battery is 30Q. So it's a clear reference to that brand. The other three batteries in that category, they're not necessarily counterfeits in that they're attempting to emulate a different brand, um, but they are very low cost. The two came from Timu and one came also from Amazon. And of these, actually two of the cells advertise that they have capacities of 9,900 milliamp hours, which uh, someone versed in 18650s will know is physically impossible. We then scanned all 1,054 of the batteries and we did this as received. So we didn't charge or discharge them in order to avoid introducing any potential confounding factors. These scans were done on a Lumafield industrial CT scanner using our ultra fast CT technology. So we were able to scan every battery in under a minute. We then ran our battery analysis module on all of the scans, which gave us all of the quality data we were looking for, allowing us to plot the distributions and pull out trends across and between brands. So what did we find when we scanned our 1,054 batteries? Well, 33 of the batteries had negative anode overhang or cathode overhang, where the positive electrode is actually on top of the negative electrode instead of having that half a millimeter safety margin we talked about earlier. Of that 33, all of those defective batteries came from the counterfeit category. And every single one of these low cost counterfeit batteries had at least one cell that showed this failure. That translates to roughly, if we were to look at them as a whole, right? One in 13 low cost and counterfeit batteries that could have this really dangerous quality defect. That's almost 8%. The distributions we saw also indicated that the quality of that anode overhang in this low cost counterfeit category was seven times worse than in the OEM cells. And when we look at the edge alignment of the jelly roll compared to OEMs, it's also 50% worse. So really these cells, um, one might expect them to be worse because they're lower cost, they come from not so reputable sources, but the degree to which they were worse really exceeded our expectations. We also found through our scans that the OEM batteries really were high quality with really tight tolerances right around the numbers we would expect. And the rewraps uh, also performed relatively well. They have around the same medians as the OEMs. They do have a slightly wider distribution when you look at that data. Um, one thing we did see across our rewrap brands is one of them, uh, Trustfire, uh, had significantly wider distributions than the other two, which I think is a testament to how Rewraps, as we said before, they're generally good, but you're not 100% sure uh, that you're getting what's advertised. The dataset puts numbers to what most engineers already suspect about 18650 cells, underscoring the severity of the risk of sourcing batteries from perhaps dubious sources. Defects like negative anode overhang and electrode misalignment meaningfully increase the risk that these batteries contain in terms of reliability and safety. And so that one in a million or one in 40 million kind of odds that we talked about earlier, um, we see that that's not evenly distributed between brands and 
between cells. Most battery failures won't cause fires, but they will meaningfully impact the performance of the devices that they're put into, um, which can have serious impacts on brand reputation as well as on the end user and whatever they may be attempting to use that application for. And of course, those batteries that do fail catastrophically can have a really large and outsized impact. And so it's very important to try to prevent both the common reliability failures and the more rare safety failures as well. In the murkiness of the battery supply chain, industrial x-ray CT is a valuable tool to ensure that you're truly receiving what you believe you've been sold. And with faster than ever solutions like Lumafield's Triton, which can scan cylindrical batteries in less than five seconds, manufacturers can now inspect more of their battery supply than ever before. The results of the Lumafield Battery Quality Report underscore the hazards that lithium ion batteries pose to everyone every day. Ultimately, everyone that interacts with this technology, from cell manufacturers to device integrators to consumers that use the end devices in their daily life, uh, needs to be aware and take action to minimize these risks.